We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and it's actually finally time for Vegas again. Fine. It is. And if you're wondering, yes, I have changed. I just only wear the sweatshirt at my house because <laughs> I'm obsessed and it's super comfy. Yes. So. If, if you are if you are not watching this on YouTube, Emily is wearing her gigantic Williams Racing sweatshirt. That is quite awesome. And it is the same sweatshirt from two days ago slash last episode. I couldn't remember when we recorded last cap. That's just how my week is going. And mm-hmm. I was like, I feel like we just recorded. And I was like, oh, we did yesterday. No. Two days ago? Two days. Sunday? When did we record? What day is it? What time I don't know. Am I in? Uh, and also, I apologize in advance for those watching on YouTube. I am eating cottage cheese, and I will not. I say I'm sorry, but I'm not really that sorry. So, Apologize for what? Yeah, I, and I'm actually really glad that we decided to record on Monday because we had, you know, an hour's worth of news to talk about for the, the last three weeks. And now we have, like, Technically, there has been no news since our episode came out on Monday. There are a couple of things that we're going to talk about before we come in, but there really hasn't been anything, thank goodness. No, and honestly, when, as soon as we got off, I was like, I bet something big drops because that's always how things happen when we record. It's like, we're done, and then all of a sudden, the world blows up. So I was very thankful. Yes. The F1 gods were looking out for us, so yay. Yes, for once. Two quick things before we dive into talking about Vegas. Number one, and I think this is interesting, and I'm really curious to see if, like, news has jinxed this, is everyone is talking about the fact that Pierre Gasly is currently on the verge of being the first F1 driver to not cost his team any money in accident damage. If if you've seen anything on social media, you've seen, like, the Destructors Championship, which is, like, Checo and Alex Albon and Logan Sargent before he got replaced, of, like, how much driver crashes cost their teams. And the fact that Pierre Gasly has had some incidents including most notably the monaco race where his teammate crashed into him which led to alpine deciding that they wanted to let go of esteban Ocon. he still hasn't cost his team anything in accident damage will that continue these last three race weekends is what i want to know no people who come up with this stuff just need to keep their dang mouths shut until the end of the season where it's like did you know he just became X, Y, Z, because when they do this, it's full on jinx. Yeah, exactly. So I just, I thought, I think that it's interesting, especially because it's like, oh, which driver? It's Pierre Gasly, the driver that we always keep forgetting about because he's in a very irrelevant Alpine car. Trying to be less irrelevant this weekend. Yes, and we'll 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 get get to there there in a a second. Something else that I'm just distraught over. I know. So... In our last podcast, it came out, or we talked about how it came out, how, like, Joe Bonnie was going to be a reserve driver for Ferrari. Potentially. I'm super excited, potentially. But it, um, nepotism got in the way, and (laughs) Arthur Leclerc is going to be Ferrari's reserve driver, which I just don't understand. I'll never understand Ferrari's, Well, it's because nepotism. choices. (laughs) Well, for, for those of you who don't know, Arthur Leclerc is Charles Leclerc's younger brother. Obviously, Charles Leclerc is a current Formula One driver who is about to become the number two Ferrari driver after a few years spent as the number one driver ahead of Carlos Sainz. But because he is being pushed off to the number two driver role behind Lewis Hamilton, and of course, this is all supposition, but let's be real, Lewis Hamilton is coming to Ferrari to be their number one driver, and Charles is going to learn very quickly about how Carlos feels. But I guess that they're throwing Arthur Leclerc a bone on behalf of the fact that Charles is about to be screwed over royally starting next season. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. But, you know, I've moved on, potentially, from being a Ferrari fan. I don't you think I you, you are wearing the Williams suit, Eddie. But if the sweatshirt fits, move team. Yeah. That said, Arthur Leclerc has been with the Ferrari team for a while. He drove in the Ferrari Academy. He um, He's their development driver, which is yeah. different from a reserve driver. But now it looks like he and Antonio Giovinazzi, who is a former 
Alfa Romeo Sauber driver, I believe. And he, he has been with the Ferrari family kind of ever since he left Formula One. He actually was in the race winning Ferrari team at Le Mans a couple of years ago. So those two will apparently will be taking over the reserve driver duties. And it is still TBD to see where Zhou Guan Yu will be driving next year. Allegedly, he has offers in other series, but we don't know. TBD, I want to keep an eye out for him, though, because he's one of my favorites. But I don't disagree. He's a great driver and a great representative for the sport. Oh, well, with that, I think we can get into Vegas. Yeah, let's talk about what happened last year. Now, obviously, we covered this in podcast episodes last, you know, in last last season. This was an episode that we we had the podcast for. But quick and dirty, it was a hot mess of a weekend with a surprisingly good race at the end. Yeah, I mean, I'm team Ferrari all the way. So last year was not a great showing for us in Vegas, but... No, not at all. That's okay. Um, yeah, agreed. Overall good weekend. I, I was stuck on some of the pageantry that just gave me the ick and cringing the entire time. So it was not my favorite race. It wasn't even in like the top 10 of my favorite races last year. And we all, if you remember, if you were around, I was doubting that Vegas would even happen. Right. Um, leading up to it, which I think is really funny that not funny but coincidental that the manhole cover incident happened in fp1 and i was like this is what i'm talking about well i'm excited to see how they do round two not not holding out a lot of hope though for it to be a great race i just i don't think it works it's unpopular opinion i think I don't think it works where it currently is. Like the the fact that part of the track is down the strip and all of that. I just, I think if they, and I think this will happen if they stay in Vegas, they will move the track off strip and it will be like not Caesars Palace parking lot status like it was in the 80s when we had the first Vegas GPs, but it will be something that will be near the strip so it isn't as disruptive to the city of Las Vegas and to downtown Las Vegas, which I think is becoming more and more of a problem the you know now that we're in the second iteration and i'm sure next year we'll you know the the casinos will be even more dissatisfied with the the way that the the grand prix interrupts you know daily casino life so i think yeah. that will eventually lead to them moving to near the strip but and that that I think that will also help it. Now the manhole cover, if you don't remember at the very beginning of what free practice rock are you one. Under? <laughs> what rock are you living under? But if you're new to Formula One this year, Carlos Sainz drove over a manhole cover and due to the downforce, which is basically the way that the cars are maneuvering on the track and that makes them go really fast in the most layman's term was way possible, Carlos's car ripped a manhole cover off the ground, a, a manhole cover that was welded into place ripped it off it destroyed the bottom of his car caused a red flag for fp1 caused fp2 to be delayed to literally the middle of the night i was i i don't remember how late i stayed up for but i stayed up until like maybe five o'clock in the morning watching all of the coverage including the team principals press conference where toto wolf and fred Vasor got into trouble for being very upset at how things were running and kind of going back and forth of towing the party line of everything is awesome and everything is actually terrible, which was hilarious and completely in, like endemic of how ridiculous the entire weekend was until we got to the race. Yeah, so I just want to pause because you made it sound very much like it was Carlos's fault. <laughs> oh, it no, no, it was not <laughs> Carlos's fault at all. You're like, Carlos caused this. and But um, no, the... So it was welded, but it wasn't welded properly and it wasn't covered properly by the whoever's running the race and setting up the track. Like it was not properly held welded. down. Welded. Yeah. So they had to completely redo it. They fixed a bunch of them too. Like they went around to every manhole cover or imperfection in the track and they made sure that, you know, everything was <laughs> sealed a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a nightmare. And oh my God, I think the reason too, why I was so miserable with Vegas was because I was traveling with my family and I'm like in the yes. middle of nowhere in Patagonia, Argentina, 
try, like I had recorded it, so I'm like trying to watch it and I couldn't connect, and it was just like such a challenge. And I, to I was DMing you updates throughout the night, even that yeah. I knew you wouldn't see, and yeah. I was just oh yeah, like, because it lying was like there. three o'clock in the morning for me. Yeah, it was it was absolutely ridiculous. And you know, the the timing of the race, like I think the race started last year at midnight and it like it was just it was catering towards the the UK and the the European audiences obviously. But that's a little ridiculous. That said, this year the race is starting at 11 o'clock local time. I think local time. I don't wait. I don't know what time zone I am in versus what time zone I'm in. No, Vegas is an hour behind because I'm in Arizona and Arizona's time zone is weird. Time is very difficult. It's still a very late race and it's, but I don't think it's going to be as ridiculous as last season. Yeah, no, I don't think so either, but we'll see. You never know. Yeah. And then the, the other thing that you, you talked about the, the pageantry, one of the, the, there, there was, of course, the like the introductory ceremony, which was all pageantry and ridiculous and like had like 30 seconds of drivers and like that was whatever. But what I thought was the most unnecessary from from last year was actually their podium procedure because they the podium was Max and Charles and Checo and they threw so them mad. into a limo and drove them halfway down the Rolls strip Royce. so that it was a Rolls Royce. It was a Rolls yeah, Royce. Oh you're, my God. you're correct. It was a Rolls Royce. And they sent them all the way down to the Bellagio, which was nowhere near the actual, you know, start finish line slash pit lane. And then like did the did the podium presentation there and then had to send them off back into the Rolls Royce again. It was so weird. And like, why couldn't like I understand Bellagio fountains, woohoo, whatever, but they're had to have been a better place for them to do the podium ceremony. And I really hope that we don't have to deal with the world's most awkward Rolls Royce taxi ride again this year. God forbid. I also hope like as much as I hated it, I hope they bring back the hunger games intro because it was just so funny to see the driver's reactions. Yes. But anyways. Okay. Let's get into 2024. I feel like this is going to be the shortest episode ever. I say that now and it probably won't be. But speaking of liveries, we've talked a little bit about it. Uh, Peen has gone El Pink for this weekend. And the rest of the season. And the rest of the season. Yes, thank you. So it is a hot pink Alpine now. And if you're hoping that it's the hot pink Alpine camel car that they teased, it's not. Um, No, they're never giving us that car. They're never giving us pink camo. I am so offended. I was really excited for pink camo. We never saw it. They had the alternate liveries where they, I never could actually tell that they had a different livery all season between the pink and the blue, but now they're going all pink. So we get a Pepto Bismol car. Like, I think they find they finally figured out what a pink car is supposed to look like and what an alternative livery is supposed to look like. Because you're right, the very beginning of the season, they had their pink version of their livery, which was not actually all that pink. It was, you could barely tell where the pink was versus where it was supposed to be blue, and we all hated it. But I think this actually, I think it looks good. No, it does. It's, it's better than I thought it would be yeah I am I'm moderately impressed but we'll see what it actually looks like on on screen I I also it it did you know the the way they like did like the neon pink it really kind of just reminds me of like a pink version of the sour car which speaking of they also have a special livery for this weekend their green flame livery which Honestly, it's I don't fine. see a difference we're not going to see a difference on the podcast I don't know why people make these small dumb changes <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I think it's better than the Red Bull livery where they just like threw some red spray paint on the car and called it a day. And it does look like kind of like ghosty flame whatevers in green, obviously. But how much of that car are we really going to see on the broadcast at all? Yeah, no. And then we have V-Carb. And V-Carb, from the beginning, we have said is the best livery. They Our livery really of the fun- year. They've done some really fun alternate alternate liveries as well. And they have a glitter livery this weekend. Love that they're playing into the theme. I feel like this is the fun team of Red Bull. So, I mean, it's fine. 
I just, it's. It's, I prefer their Miami livery. I agree. Yeah. But I, I do like it. It took me a minute to actually see like the, where the glitter actually was on the livery. And it, it, I think they did a good job, but I don't think that it stands out in the way that it should in Vegas. I think that they should have chromed it up a little bit. I think it's very matte is, is like, that was my first impression of the livery. It is just very flat. And like I get glitter, but it didn't feel like it was actually very sparkly. No. And I completely agree. And especially when it goes fast, like I want to see some shimmer, you know what I mean? Like I want it to be, especially because this, could, this is that. so under the lights that like, it's a nice livery, but I think that they could have done a little bit better for Vegas. But that said, they also didn't make it like super cheesy, ridiculous Vegas. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, and then something else that uh, I, it pains me to compliment this. Devon Akon has yes. this, oh, I hate to say it. It might be a top five if not top three helmet for me. I know we have to reevaluate at the end of the season but yes. S1 Akon has the coolest helmet it is a Captain America helmet it looks so Captain America and normally I'm the first one to be like guys stars stripes red white blue stop this is dumb just because you're in the U.S. doesn't mean you have to go all eagle but I'm obsessed and I really really like it and I think he did a really good job yeah, and Esteban Akon has had multiple Marvel-themed helmets this season that he has knocked out of the park. Or not this season, but just like in, in the last couple of years. Obviously, he had the Deadpool helmet. I did think he had like a Spider-Man helmet once. I, Or maybe I'm just hallucinating. But he's had, like, this, this helmet is really cool. And like, he's just like the Marvel helmet guy. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's a big superhero fan too, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. Anyways, it's really cool. And I think it's like, it's it's a cool way to like do America without being obnoxious about America. Like yeah. Star Stripes, Flags, Eagles, whatever. Like Caps in America. A la Logan Sargent. Sargent. Uh, which is All funny because right. he's the only American. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of Lo Logan Sargent, I think he's officially joining IndyCar next year. Yeah, I saw, I saw a bunch of like rumors that he is committing, but I haven't seen anything like official. But I also don't follow IndyCar very closely. I, and I could care less only, about I only care so much as like that one of the problems with ESPN alerts is that when it comes to motorsport, if you want Formula One ESPN alerts, you have to get all the motorsport ESPN alerts. No, so I'll don't. get like can I turn them off? Can yeah, I turn off can NASCAR? You can specifically tag yes! F1. Oh my god, thank god, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. I really don't care about NASCAR. Um I will keep the IndyCar on just in case Danny Ricardo makes it over there, just to keep an eye on that. But Fired. I really don't care about NASCAR. Yes. Well, okay. We Good to, to know. That. Okay. So. Miracles can happen. Let's recap and regroup, friends, on where we are in the Drivers' Championship and also Constructors, because I feel like we need that going into Vegas because we've had this yes. weird second fall break. So. Ugh, weird. Where are we currently at? Obviously, Max is in the lead. Um, and I think he can possibly win in Vegas if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, it's 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 actually pretty I wouldn't say technically it is pretty easy. The problem is obviously Max was very dominant in Brazil 300 years ago, but he was also very dominant in a rain race and the rain really is the great equalizer in Formula 1 where he and and he is by far one of the greatest wet track drivers in the history of Formula One, which really, you know, really benefited him. So can he win the title in Vegas? Yes. Is his car going to be able to get him that win in Vegas? That is a question that I don't know. He basically, all he has to do is, is basically finish ahead of Lando or win the race. And that will, that will clinch it for him. Lando has to outscore Max by three points or more to move this fight into the Qatar weekend. So it, it really is a question of 
where can Max finish versus where can Lando finish to, to, to really see that. And also there's another big question mark of Lando Norris only has three laps of race experience on this track because he crashed <gasps> last right. year. Yes. Yeah. So, so this, this could even things out a little bit for them, but if basically Lando has to outscore Max by three points or more, it's still not really going to save Lando's chances of actually winning this thing. And obviously McLaren has done their 180 of like, oh no, we weren't really focused on the driver's championship. That wasn't really happening here. But if Max does finish behind Lando, um, if it looks like if Lando finishes fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh, Max can finish one place behind him and still win the championship as long as Lando doesn't get fastest lap. Sounds a little mathematically complicated, but basically... This sounds like the dumbest parlay. It's like, oh, if this and this, but this, and, this, this. and plus one equals sock. So. so so, basically, Crofty will take care of doing the math for us on the broadcast if you're watching with Sky Sports. Oh, but it it really, it, it depends on... It'll make a lot of things easier, long story short, if Max just wins this damn race. I don't think Max is going to win this race just based on where the Red Bull has been, you know, the, the latter half of, of this season. But I do think I, I'd give him like a 60% chance to win the, the championship in Vegas. And I know Vegas wants him to win in Vegas because Vegas wants they that do. excitement. They they want to be the they want to be the one to say we we crown the world champion at our race instead of sending it off to the Middle East. Yeah. So layman term recap, Max is going to win world championship this weekend. Either this week or next week. I mean there, layman there's a, recap, there's, Catherine. Lays, lay, layman, recap. Layman's recap is there is a, a solid chance that he can do it, but it really depends on where he and Lando finish. And okay. that that's that's really it. And I, I do think, you know, based that you know it it could go either way. Yeah. So and then to do a quick recap of constructors. So McLaren is currently in P1, then it's Ferrari, then it is Red Bull. They're all fairly close. I wouldn't say McLaren is a lock. I think these no, next three races are super No, mathematically it could go important. either way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. they're they're close enough to where the math is mathing of anyone could win. We're not going to sit and do all of the math and the figures for every scenario because we still have three races left and we still have sprints. So yeah, really so, yeah. the only way that McLaren could clinch it this weekend if is if both Ferrari drivers and both Red Bull drivers don't not score points this this weekend. Which well, is let's not put that thought into the universe. <laughs> Oopsie. I, I just say, say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying we're probably not going to see a constructors champion crowned until we actually get to Abu Dhabi. Um, and it, it's actually been interesting because now people are coming up with like, does the constructors championship actually matter in like the grand scheme of formula one, which is kind of funny. Cause it's like, yeah, you know, like, you know who the driver's champions always are going to be, but do you ever know who the, like, do you remember who the constructors champion was in 1996 when Damon Hill won the world championship? No, because no one cares about 1996. Yeah, well, I'm actually curious boss. now who was. <laughs> well, Catherine F1. is Googling. I'm going to give a weather update and play Weather Girl. So, something to remember about Vegas. Oh, oh wait, 96. That would have been. It was Williams. Okay, great. Williams. Yep, yeah, okay, it was Williams. Back anyway, my, back to my weather, weather update. Weather. Vegas is a desert. It's very, very cold at night. So this is going to be one of the coldest races on the calendar. Doesn't make sense because it's Vegas, but again, desert really it's drops November. temperature at night and it's November. So we're going to see temperatures in the 40s, 50s Celsius. It's like eight degrees, I think. Something I'm like that. Usually pretty, I'm always like two or three degrees off, but, um, and that's for quality. And then the race is going to be in the 60s, which is going to be really interesting for tires because tires are very temperamental when it comes to temperature. So yeah, should be 
interesting to see. I also think it's it's going to be interesting that it's going to be warmer on, you know, the actual race night than it is going to be on like the practices and qualities. And I don't know necessarily how much that's going to impact the the overall race weekend, but we there's there's so much talk these days about like the new cooling kits that the teams and drivers are going to get next year for like really tough tracks and and really hot races like you know miami's a a really hot one obviously in qatar last year which was earlier in the year you know half the drivers had to go to the med center after the race because the you know the conditions were just so awful and everyone got you know sick and dehydrated but we're not going to need those cooling kits in vegas because it's going to be freezing or at least in in my opinion freezing because i live in a desert and anytime it goes under like 70 degrees i get cold yeah i think the the big thing for me that i think is in oh gosh words i think for me it's it's i i align this thought, I think, with a lot of the team principals and some of the drivers of, like, having quality and free practices at completely different times of the day than the actual race make it really hard to get information and feedback for the race. So certain things you can't help, right? Like rain, but when you have weather and you're going to have to, you get all this feedback on your tires for, you know, 20 degrees cooler then when the race is actually going to happen, I think that makes it really difficult for them to take all that information, have all of the strategists take that information and, and be able to give accurate feedback during the race because they haven't necessarily had this in practice. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be really interesting to see how they're able to handle going from, you know, 50 degrees qualifying and setting the car up for that. And then, you know, the next night in the actual race and it's, you know, 10 degrees warmer. Yeah. So I don't know. All right. Last but not least, before we get into our predictions, upgrades. So Ferrari is running an experimental floor and an updated front wing. So that should be interesting. Yeah. The thing about this, this floor spec is obviously this year, Ferrari has dealt with a lot of bouncing. Um, the word that we don't use anymore is porpoising. porpoising. That was that was word du jour two years ago when it was very dramatic. And then everybody's like, we can't stand the word porpoising. So we're not going to say it anymore. But that's what they've been dealing with. And considering they also still have a chance of overtaking McLaren for the Constructors' Championship and three races to go, including a sprint, there's not a lot of time left. They're really throwing things to to the wall to see what sticks but primarily this is for lewis like this this is for the 2025 car and this is a little bit of them getting started of figuring out how they're going to set up the 2025 car and how they're going to develop next year's car because you know this is a podcast that only talks about the future only talking about the future exactly well and um, only one of the drivers will be running the spec because they correct. only have one version of this, you know, experimental floor. So who is it going to probably be? Charles. But. I don't know. If if it's experimental, I would say they probably give it to Carlos. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. They, they will both try it out in, in the, the practices and we will see if it, and it, it might not even be used in the actual race, but it, if, if it's going to help them in their fight with McLaren, they probably will. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yep. All right. Shrug. Shall we get into? Let us get into our predictions. predictions. All right. So for those of you new to the podcast or if you need a refresher because it's been so long since Sao Paulo, Catherine and I do predictions. We pick pole, podium, P10. Biggest surprise is just for fun as is just uh, who's going to do it dumb. Uh, We give ourselves points for pole, podium, and P10. Last season we took some liberties. This year we're taking it a little bit more seriously. Not completely though. So with all of that said, Catherine, who is your pole sitter for Vegas 2024? I am going with last year's pole sitter for Vegas. I'm going with Charles Leclerc. Ooh, hate that. Okay. So I have Max for Stappen. Interesting. I know. I know the Red Bull's like not doing great, but I think he's really trying to become world champion like now. 
So we might see some max magic is what, what you're predicting. Exactly. Yeah. So with all that said, who's your podium? My podium is Charles, Oscar, and then Lando. And I say Oscar then Lando because I don't think that we're going to be hearing anything from Papaya Orders this weekend. Or actually we might, but we'll see. And I have Max in one of those positions where he can be behind Lando and still win the world championships. But anyway, I'm throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks with my podium. And um, it's probably going to be very, very wrong because we've been trash at podiums lately. We really have. Yeah, I'm not holding a lot of space for mine, but I have Charles Max Lando. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay, Go next is title. my favorite pick because it's so impossible, except I have been doing decently on P10. So P10 is the last place on the grid where you get a point. You get one point for P10. We give ourselves three because it is so difficult. I picked, I feel like, what used to be a pretty safe bet for p10 hasn't been lately but uh i have our our good pal lance stroll Mm, let's see will 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 he actually start the race and if he starts the race he will become the most experienced canadian formula one driver in the history of formula one but he has to actually start the race first so still tbd on that considering how um his formation lap in sao paulo went God bless him. Um, Okay. Yeah. And then my P10 pick was me kind of looking at last year's results, shrugging and saying, "Hmm, maybe it'll be K-Mags. So I picked K-Mags. You know, not a bad pick. I think that's a pretty safe one. He's Again, he's one of those, it's like Yuki, K-Mags, Stroll. Fernando. Fernando Albon last year was pretty like a safe P10 pick. So we'll see. We will see. We will see. Now, for, just for fun, we pick surprise and oops. So, Catherine, what is your big surprise of the weekend? My big surprise is that we will not have any race in- director-induced nonsense or nonsense in general. Obviously, we had a heavily delayed FP2 last year and all sorts of, of, of crises. I don't think we're going to have that. And I also think it would be a big surprise if we don't have something that puts the new race director front and center because we have a brand new race director this weekend if you missed our, our, um, our pre-Vegas news roundup. And... This is one of the biggest, most complicated races of the year and really not where you want to have a brand new non-Formula One experienced race director. He has experience with F2 and F3, but as we have said many, many times, that is a far cry from how things go in Formula One. So I'd be shocked if we don't have anything that, you know, bring brings him to the forefront. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I think it's interesting. My big surprise of the weekend, if I can open my notes to, where is it? So I have that it's going to be a safety car free weekend. Ah. Yeah. So we, I mean, I feel like we've went for a really long stretch without safety cars. And then all of a sudden we like, we're seeing a ton of them. Yes. Rain, but, um, but yeah, so I have a, a no safety car weekend. Interesting. I think. There's, there's a chance. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe Lando will crap out on lap three again. And then we really won't have to worry about wondering if Max is going to win the championship or not. Cause it'll just be done. But anyway, anyway we'll see. Anyway. Yep. So then for your oops, who's going to do an oops this weekend, Catherine? I just feel like this is going to be another weekend that is just not Mercedes day. I, mm. I think that, that Mercedes is going to continue with their, Oh, we love having Lewis with us and we're going to miss him with he's when he's gone. So we're going to make him as miserable as possible these last couple of months. You know, that's fair. I can see it. I can see yeah. it for sure. Um, so I just have the biggest Grand Prix in general. Again, I'm not holding out a lot of hope for them. So between the pageantry being cringy and just something going wrong that is so avoidable. Um, yeah, the biggest GP gets it for me. Okay, that's fair. And another point to, to, to bring up is the Vegas GP is one of the few races that is actually owned and operated by Formula One itself. Yep. Like most other races are owned locally and run locally. Vegas is owned by Formula One. And so 
that could be part of the reason why it's a, a little absurd, but mostly it's Honestly, absurd because the FIA likes it. to shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, I didn't think about it, but that makes a lot of sense of why there's so much more pageantry because that's like the exact entertainment product that, you know, they're trying to put out. It's so liber- Liberty Media, you know, forward. Coded, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, those are our predictions. Um, fun little update, though. So uh, if you guys listen to our last podcast, I am going to be out of office on a remote island for 12 days. So I am actually <laughs> going to miss the Vegas GP, and I'm also going to miss Qatar. But Catherine has some amazing guest hosts lined up for you guys again because she's so great. And let's me take vacation. When we come back with our Vegas recap, you will get the my recap of my predictions as well as the guest host predictions and how they fared as well. Um, and we don't have the guest host predictions in yet, but I will <laughs> I will assure everyone that the guest host predictions will be done prior to the race because I know where the guest host is going to be and I will make him do it. So there's that. But yes, we, we will have some guesty besties on for the next couple of races and Emily will be off on her deserted island enjoying vacation things. I, I let her go on vacation. She lets me run off, uh, run off and run a summer camp for two months every year. So Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Well, final thoughts. As much as I like throw shade at the Vegas GP, I do. I am excited to see how they do year two. Hopefully, all the kinks have worked out, worked themselves out, and it's much better. But I am interested to see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I, I already feel like it's a lot less of like, oh my god, it's Vegas, huge deal, blah blah blah, and more of like, here's another race that we're going to, and it happens to also be in Las Vegas, and so I feel like it's already been a little bit less ridiculous going into the week of, obviously, we didn't have a gigantic, big, ridiculous opening ceremonies, we didn't have a golf tournament at the Wynn Hotel, you know, under the the watchful eye of the sphere, so. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I I watched all of it on Netflix. It was incredibly boring and weird and weird it is basically the, the, the recap of that little mini golf tournament. And Carlos won and I think he broke the trophy and that was funny. But anyway, I, I think this is, it's more of just like, here's another race weekend that we're going to and we're going to go and watch some racing and it's a night and it's cool and I'm also going to be like a zombie watching it so I think it'll be interesting and I'm just excited to have another race again because we are slowly or quickly running out of races to watch yeah exactly well that is the end of our episode but before we leave you guys and before I disappear we need to hear your fun fact so what is your f1 fun fact for us for today So F1 fun fact is I was kind of poking around on statsf1.com and I wanted to to see who is the current leader for most consecutive classifications. So most consecutive races where they have finished and been classified. Obviously, if you DNF in a race, but you finish more than 75% of it, you can still be classified. But right now, the current F1 active leader for classifications is Oscar Piastri with 25 consecutive races finished between Mexico City 2023 and Sao Paulo three weeks ago. The F1 record for consecutive finishes belongs to Lewis Hamilton from Silverstone 2018 to Bahrain 2020, where he had COVID and could not race. Um, Number two is Max Verstappen, who went from Imola 2022 to Saudi Arabia 2024, with his 43 straight races. There you go. Yep. So there, there's there's yeah. some some fun fact toys for you, and I think we'll give um, our our off track uh, events of the weekend to the guest hosts. So we'll see what they come up with That's over the fair. weekend. Yeah, I'll allow it. <laughs> okay, Good. Like Catherine said, we will have a recap episode out. So the race is on Saturday, but we will have our recap episode out on Monday, following the same schedule as if there was a Sunday race. Um, Oh, yeah. I, f- I forget the fact that this race is on Saturday night, which will be Sunday. Like, I know that it's like, it, I know it's Saturday night, yeah. but I also just keep forgetting like, oh, that it's Saturday means not Sunday. Yes. The race will finish on Sunday in the United States because <laughs> it will be way past midnight it's when it's over. A Sunday, it's still a Sunday race then. Still yes. a Sunday race. Basically, yes. 
Yeah, make sure you keep up and follow Catherine on our Instagram this weekend for all free practices, quality, as well as the race. That has been our biggest prediction episode. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.